Johnny D here and welcome back to another PC Playground video. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the 4060 Ti 16GB Zotac version. I picked this up on Newegg for $429. I know the 4060 series has gotten some bad press mostly due to the price. But with the price drop coming in at $429, does that change? So today, I thought we would try and upgrade this old HP Pavilion desktop with the 4060 Ti. I wanted to see what kind of performance we can get out of it. I also wanted to see if this could be a viable upgrade option uh, for other PCs. So with that said, let's get to it. Here we have the Zotac Gaming GeForce RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte AMP Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse bundle. So this bundle comes with a beautiful magnetic backplate Comes with some fan stickers, also comes with a tote bag, uh, a real nice little package. You could probably do a nice little theme build with that. Um, that's just what comes to mind. But anyway, let's move on to the specs. Uh, the 4060 Ti comes with 4,352 CUDA cores. Has 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. Comes on a 120-bit memory bus. It's going to boost up to 2,595 MHz, uh, works on PCI Express 4.0, has three display ports out, one HDM out, so you could run up to four screens if you wanted to. Recommended power supply is 500 watts, has a total power consumption of 165 watts. It's going to take up 2.2 slots in the back of your PC. The card length is 225 millimeters by 123.2 millimeters by 40.1 millimeters so a real small card small form factor you could do some really nice micro atx builds itx builds okay so let's talk about our hp 2021 uh, pavilion gaming desktop computer uh, so this computer comes with a ryzen 5 5600 g uh, it has a Radeon RX 5500 4GB graphics card. It comes standard with 8GB of RAM, one stick. It has a 256GB NVMe SSD for storage. It also comes with a mouse and keyboard. Um, the most important thing is, though, it has a 400 watt power supply. Uh, just, just take special note of that because we're going to have to be careful on how much power we draw. So one of the first things I did when I bought this PC was I uh, upgraded the storage space. So I added a one terabyte SSD. I also upgraded the RAM. So we now have uh, 16 gigabytes at 3200 megahertz, two by eight. Uh, so that's gonna help us out as well. So all we got left to do is to take out the old graphics card. We'll put in the new graphics card. We'll close up the computer. We will update the drivers then we'll do some benchmarks a little bit of game gameplay uh, see how she performs while we work on this pc let's talk about total power draw when i did the math i came up with a total power draw of 405 watts and remember we only have a 400 watt power supply so the rtx 5500 4 gigabyte which was the old graphic card has a total power draw of 110 watts I've also seen upgrades with the RTX 6600, which draws a total of 132 watts with no issues on the system. Now the 4060 Ti has a total draw of 160 watts. So I don't want to push the power supply too much. So I'm going to undervolt the 4060 Ti to only draw 130 watts. Undervolt might be the wrong term. Let's just say we want to reduce the power consumption of the graphics card. There are a couple ways we can do this. We can use the software from Zotac, or we can use Alt-Z, the NVIDIA app that comes with the driver download. Basically, we want to reduce the power to 80%, which will give us about 130 watt power drop. Okay, moving on to some gameplay. Here we are, Ratchet and Clank. Uh, we are at 1440p, DLSS set to quality. And as we go through this, we're getting around 130 frames per second. Um, really nice showing. Yep, 
here we have the last of us part one and we are at 1440p DLSSS at the quality and we're getting between 68 and 80 so probably an average around 72 frames per second um, this is a notorious hard game to play it really uh, eats up GPUs Up oh, next we have Forza Horizon 5, uh, we are at 1440p again, DLSS set to quality, and in gameplay we're averaging between uh, 130, 140 FPS, uh, goes up and down a little bit, but really good shot. Here we are in Cyberpunk, we are at 1440p, Ultra Settings, we turn DLSS to Auto, turn the Custom Settings, we're averaging between 95 and 100 FPS as we go through this scene, a really good showing. Okay, last up we got Apex Legends. Here we are at 1440p. V-Sync disabled, NVIDIA Reflex enabled, everything else set to high. As we go through the map, we're averaging between 140, 160 FPS, sometimes 180, depending on where we're on the map. But again, another nice showing at 1440p. Okay, here we are on F1 2023, we're at 1440p, high settings, DLSS at the quality, in-game benchmark, and we're averaging between 90 and 100 frames per second as we go around the track, uh, that looks pretty good. Another nice showing. So as we go through this cyberpunk benchmark, let's talk about power draws. If you take a look at the chart, there are two GPUs I recommend for this specific upgrade. The RX 6600 at 132 watts, and the RTX 4060 8 gig non-TI at 115 watts. While the RTX 4060 Ti performed very, very well, we are leaving some performance on the table because we did run it at 80% power. Whereas the two previous mentioned GPUs, we can run full out and will not have to reduce the power. All right, let's talk about the results. Now, we took a 2021 HP Pavilion with a 2019 graphics card, four years old, that was only capable of low to medium 1080p gameplay at best. We upgraded it with a 4060 Ti, that gave us great 1440p, high settings plus more performance in just about any game. I think the power draw of the 4060 series isn't talked about enough. That in itself is technology at its best. So what do you think? Is this card worth it? Let me know in the comments below. So if you like what I'm doing, hit that like button and subscribe so you get notified when I release new content. And as always, have a great day, and thanks for watching.